Hi everyone, I'm Mark Hatchadorian, Director of Glasshouse Horticulture and Senior Curator of Orchids. Due to reduced capacity, the Orchid Show, our Spring Spectacular, will return in 2022. This year, we're doing a spotlight on orchids in which we are displaying a range of beautiful plants, some from our extensive botanical collections, and allowing our visitors to explore the conservatory in a safe way. Throughout the conservatory, the staff has created a wonderful series of vignettes full of beautiful orchids in bloom, like some of these green walls, like the one behind me. We've used branches from trees reclaimed from the garden to create these spectacular vignettes with mosses, ferns, and of course, beautiful orchids in bloom. So if you come along with me, we'll tour through them and I can tell you a little bit more about this year's Spotlight on Orchids. Behind me and above me is a group of Kokodama, a style of horticulture that was developed in Japan in which the roots of the orchid are wrapped in moss and now suspended to create this beautiful constellation of flowers hanging from the skywalk. These focal points help lead our visitors through the conservatory to experience not only the plants that exist in our botanical collections, but the beautiful orchids themselves. As you can see over my shoulder, these kokodamas lead the eye up and through the lowland rainforest gallery to the reflecting pool in the center of this house. Come on along and we'll talk about that next display. In this little hidden reflecting pool in the lowland rainforest gallery, we've created a series of orchid islands. These beautiful series of Paphia petalums and Phalaenopsis orchids are growing in ways sometimes plants are found in nature. Orchids are great colonists. They exploit and grow areas in the forests which other plants do not. Many orchids in the tropics grow as epiphytes high up in the branches of trees in which they get to the most available sunlight, air, and moisture hanging off the branches where many other plants can't survive. Other orchids will even grow as what's called a lithophyte, growing on the surface of stones in that very thin moss layer, surviving in another area where many plants can't grow. So here in these orchid islands, you can not only explore the beauty of each individual flowers that exist, but also look up and around at some of the incredible specimens that exist within our botanical collections. Here in the vine gallery of the conservatory, one of my favorite houses, many of our visitors often pause, sit, take a moment to just not only enjoy the warmth and humidity of the greenhouse, but to appreciate the beauty of the vines that arch overhead. Here in the center pool, we have a raft full of Phalaenopsis and Cymbidiums in bloom. And at the far end, which we'll show in a minute, another one of our spectacular orchid walls. But this house at this time of year is at its peak bloom with many of the vines showing their incredible flowers dangling down from above. I wanted to make sure we stopped and took a look at probably one of my favorite plants in the entire conservatory. It's not an orchid at all, but a tropical legume vine native to the Philippines, the jade vine. Every year in March and April, it covers itself with the most spectacular teal Tiffany blue green flowers. These long hanging chains of flowers can be over three feet long, and they're actually pollinated by bats in their native habitat. There's probably only about six flowers in the world with blooms this color. And because of this unusual color, we often get accused of watering it with dye to get at the blooms to look like this. But in reality, it is completely natural and really is one of the most spectacular flowering plants in the entire world. Relatives of this Cymbidium orchid were amongst some of the first orchids cultivated over 2,500 years ago in China. These plants were prized for the grace and beauty of their foliage and the sweet fragrances of the flowers. This orchid is actually an excellent plant to demonstrate one of the most popular questions I get here at the Botanical Garden. What makes an orchid an orchid and what makes them different than other flowers? Like all other flowers, orchids have sepals and petals. Orchid flowers have three sepals, one, two, and three. They also have three petals, one, two, but the third petal is modified into this structure. This structure is called the lip or labellum. All of the spots and lines you see here act like lights on a runway for a visiting pollinating insect, guiding them to the center of the flower 
where they might pick up a nectar reward or the pollen of the plant. Unlike a lily or other flowers where the pollen is dust-like, orchid pollen is fused into a mass hidden in this flower here. This will actually stick to the back of the insect, which is a very efficient transfer of pollen from one flower to another. All of the orchid's reproductive parts are fused into a single structure at the center of the bloom. This nose, or column as it's referred to, is one of the other characters that unites the orchid family. If this orchid was to be pollinated, the seed pod behind the bloom here would then grow and develop and some orchid seed pods can produce over one million seeds. Orchid seeds are the smallest seeds of any plant known. They're absolutely dust-like. After the seed pod matures, the seeds will be released into the wind, hopefully floating to a location where they can germinate and grow. At the end of the vine gallery is another one of these spectacular green walls using reclaimed locust wood from the grounds of the garden. Throughout this green wall are a number of new and interesting Phalaenopsis hybrids. Phalaenopsis are now one of the most popular house plants in the world, eclipsing the poinsettia a few years ago as the most produced florist crop, and for good reason. They're one of the easiest orchids to grow in your home, and they're also one of the ones with the most long-lasting of blooms. Under ideal conditions, Phalaenopsis flowers can last four to six months, or sometimes even longer. In this year's Spotlight on Orchids, we brought out a number of really fantastic specimens from our extensive orchid collection. Probably the tallest and most dramatic is this Lelia superbians with flower spikes almost eight feet tall. These fireworks-like displays of flowers are born on these long stems on the species native to Mexico. But in addition to the tallest orchid on display, we have probably the smallest orchid on display. This tiny plant, only a couple of inches tall, has the smallest flowers, not only in the exhibition, but in almost the entire orchid kingdom. These long pipe cleaner-like inflorescences with their fuzzy stems have hundreds of individual blooms. This orchid is from a genus called Oberonia, named after Oberon, the mythical forest king from Midsummer's Night Dream. But each one of the blooms of these tiny orchid flowers are only a millimeter in diameter. And if magnified, you can still see the same parts as we saw in that Cymbidium bloom. The New York Botanical Garden works actively in orchid conservation by rescuing and rehabilitating plants that were being smuggled into the country. We work very closely with the Fish and Wildlife Department under the program called CITES, which is the Congress for International Trade in Endangered Species. When plants are being smuggled, if they are found, rather than see them be destroyed, they come to rescue centers like the New York Botanical Garden, in which the plants that are in often poor shape are rehabilitated and added to our permanent collections. They remain property of the US government, but we can now use these plants for research, education, and of course, horticultural display. Throughout the years, our involvement in this program has allowed thousands of orchid plants to be rescued. Plants like this Dendrobium amethystoglossa from the Philippines, Paphia pedalums from China and Vietnam, and a whole range of other orchid plants. This program is wonderful and successful because it allows the New York Botanical Garden to actively participate in orchid conservation. As you move through the conservatory in this year's Spotlight on Orchids display, don't forget to look up and around you because some of the plants are overhead, like this constellation of Cocodama phalaenopsis in the Upland Rainforest Gallery. The orchid collection at the New York Botanical Garden is one of our historic glasshouse collections, with many specimens being decades old or even older. A special plant that's on display this year is Paphia petalum a. Dimmick. This plant arrived at the garden in the 1920s and has now been grown in our glasshouse collections for nearly 100 years. Here in the upland rainforest are a grouping of plants in the genus Epidendrum. They have a wide range of size and form. Epidendrum are one of the largest orchid genera 
ranging from southern North America through Central and into South America with over 1,000 species. They have a huge range of size, shape, some like this Epidendrum ciliare with this fringed lip or labellum, and others like these reed stem epidendrums that have these long, tall, reed-like stems. The name Epidendrum comes from the word epi, meaning a pond, and dendro, meaning tree, which refers to the epiphytic habit of many of these plants and was one of the first orchid genera described in the tropics. With orchids being one of the largest flowering plant families, their greatest diversity is in the wet tropics of the world around the equator. But their diversity extends further out into some environments where you wouldn't exactly expect them to be, areas such as deserts of the world. This orchid, native to Madagascar, Isiocleides gracilima, has evolved these beautifully patterned leaves, which help it remain hidden in the wild. The foliage looks like dead leaves and keeps it hidden from herbivores that might try to eat this plant. This orchid, Eulophia petersi, native to Africa, has very hard leathery leaves, each tipped with a spine and edges that are nearly serrated, definitely deterring anything that might try to eat this orchid. Many orchids possess interesting and unusual fragrances. Not all are good, but when we often think about fragrance in orchids, the first thing we think about are beautiful cattleyas with their sweet perfumes. But many other orchids are fragrant as well. This plant of Vandopsis gigantea has a very interesting woodsy fragrance. This is another one of our orchid antiques from our collection arriving at the garden in 1904, now here over 100 years. A really wonderful and interesting orchid that shows not only the diversity, but the history of our orchid collections. Thank you all for joining me today in this little tour of Spotlight on Orchids here in the Enid A. Howe Conservatory. I hope you enjoyed it, learned a little something, and look forward to seeing you here in the garden this year, and of course, next year when the Orchid Show returns in 2022.